right, so we are about to rock and roll and finish this track up. Let me make sure I've got this on stereo for you guys, if you want to select, select stereo on your side, I believe. And we have, give me a thumbs up if you can hear this when I play it. Oh, no, you won't be able to hear it because I need to go to the right um, sound card. All right, now give me the thumbs up if you can hear. All righty, so I haven't heard this track since since yesterday when I was doing the editing. So let's have a listen to see what we got. I'll play it from the top and then more, um, or most of the song. Now this is a typical ABA form. So there's a B section in the middle and then there's another another a section that has little extra stuff at the end so the a section b section then an a section and actually just before we do that let me talk a little bit about some extra little information about house music so whenever i find a new genre or if i'm looking for a new genre i'm like okay i need to do a little bit of research pull it up on do <laughs> put the question in google and and i put in you know um fundamentals of of house music and this is what, what came up so in house, uh, it's uh, in its most typical form, the genre is character characterized by repetitive four times four, um, four, four rhythms, including drums and bass, offbeat hi-hats. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. Offbeat hi-hats. So you're coming on the on the um, the eights. That's mostly what that means. You got snare drums. We've got claps and or snaps and the tempo. This is another big one. Tempo is between 120 and 130. Now, I said to you guys, um, uh, when I first did it, I, I called the temp tempo 118, 128. It's so close. It's so close. That's that's fine. So that's not a big deal breaker. Um, uh, even if you were down at 115, uh, you wouldn't be you, you wouldn't be killing yourself. You wouldn't be uh, hurting yourself. It's, it's still in there. But when you're starting to get down lower by probably about 10 BPMs, then you're starting to notice things and you know i'd probably even say seven or eight nine ten peep difference you know then then you're starting to really get into something different here but um uh synthesizers riffs uh, deep bass lines and often but not necessarily sung or spoken sampled vocals so this is really it's really great to pull these up on just to kind of give yourself some guidelines because I will pull up these guidelines and then I'll go have a listen to uh three or four songs might even skip around on the on the songs on iTunes or something and I'll, you know, I'll type up EDM house, you know, and just have a look at some of the people that iTunes is calling house, which, you know, I, I'm pretty sure they'd be right on the right on the right on the button on that one. So I just listened to a couple of them, and I'd listen for these elements, and I'd be like, "Yep, there you go. Uh, they're right at 120, or maybe they're 122 or 118." Okay, got it. So that was down. That was a check. Is the the hi hats on the off beats? Yep, check. And it's just it's so fun because. They're usually right on. And then if you have a look at another one called Trap or something, you'll notice there will be elements, you know. And under the EDM banner, there are so many. There's chill. There's um, uh, there are so many. There's dance. There's um, uh, hip hop. There's and they, they just all have these little nuances. But they have it's anyway. It's really really cool. But I just wanted to add that to um, before we kind of get going here. But let's let's go ahead and play.
and I accidentally stopped it too far. I clicked on something. <laughs> All right, cool. So there we go. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, it's a fun little track, and um, you know, I, I really think it's got the elements that um, you need for um, for this house beat, and now for for, for house music. And now the, the cool thing is, there's a uh, anybody on the inside knows the company I'm working with, um, and uh, we need this kind of music, but with vocals in one of the one of the locations. So. But um, let's dive in. So a few of the things, few of the things that I've got here that I want to highlight, and I'll just go through the tracks real quick. So we've got our drum beat, which we I, everything started with the drum beat. Now you'll notice that's got no kick in it. So what I actually did during the um, process was that I actually added a kick, an 808. And um, and I, I changed the notes so that actually the notes went with the bass line. And so this is the kick. And we're going to have to see how it feels, but I might add another kick. I might I might bring that kick back in um and just turn it down a little bit but i think at the moment the kick was kind of clashing a little bit with the notes so i might play with that a bit now um just to give it the punch but it actually kind of worked without it so it actually had an 808 um going as the kick sound so but i, I might add i might play with that and see what we can come up with so then we go to uh towards the end of the song i added one more drum drum uh thing happening let's have a listen to that Now that's actually, we have an effect on that one. So it's kind of the dr same drum loop, but I'm using this effect by um, Chris Lord Algae. I've had it for a while, but I haven't used it that much lately. And so I just threw a sound on there and I went to uh, a preset called uh, Dirty Room and it worked out, worked great. And so I didn't want to change it. So I like that. And in the video, you'll see how I kind of came up with that one. It was an accident. I was like, man, that sounds great. I'm going to do that. It was like a 90s kind of sound, but that's that really adds to that. And that's just in the second B section, I added that. Now, the cool thing I want to show you guys is in this B section, um, I actually put a filter on the, I actually got the hats, I believe, and put a sound on it. And I did two of these filters here. This is a real kind of cool thing to do for a B section. Or you can do it for any bridges or a down section before you go to a big part. It's another little trick you can put into your, into your bag of tricks. And so what I did there is I kind of overlap. If you can see, these are kind of fades. So uh, um, this is just the kind of the fade cur fade curve that I chose. And then um, and I chose one that kind of comes up a little bit or steeper towards the end. But on those effects, it's just hats. And uh, on there, I have the, the Chris Lord Algae effects again, um, just a different, another different uh, preset. This one's called Ear Dart. Um, it worked great. So I didn't, I didn't know if I tweaked it. And then I have a delay on that which I, you know, I got like this delay thing happening and it's not too wet. It's a little bit, not, it's not 100% wet. I think it's, what well, it's 41%. And then, um, oh, and then the EQ, I put a real telephone EQ on it. So I got rid of the, the highs and I got rid of the lows. And so it's really in the middle. So then when it goes to the full beat, it's going to feel real big. It's going to be like, I'm holding back and giving it this really small sound. Then we go big and it's just, it's just going to, it's just going to make it sound so bigger and it makes the B section a little bit, a um, little bit different, you know, and then um, I cross faded that with another different effect that I liked when I was playing around and trying to find effects. I was like, I liked this one. So what I actually did was the same, um, it's the exact same loop thing. Um, I just got different effects on it and that's when they kind of cross over. That's 
that's uh, that's most of the drums there. Now we have a few reverse cymbals here. Um, I wanted to start this song with a bit of a a reverse cymbal kind of coming in, so I didn't want it to sound. So I played with that a little bit. You'll see in the videos, but I played with that, and so it, it doesn't start with a drum fill. It starts with with a reverse cymbal. And so, and then the other thing on these reverse symbols, the second reverse symbol is, a, I called it a long symbol, but it's got a lot of reverb on it. It actually has, I'll solo that one for you and you'll see. So it's a really long tail, but it sounds really, it sounds great with this. It's almost like a white noise that happens, which I've used actually, instead of a symbol, I've used white noise where it's like, ksh. You can kind of change that filtery sound and that's fun too but these symbols worked great so and then i've uh this this here is called the side chain if you don't know how to do a side chain um uh side chain uh side chaining anything um definitely look that up and definitely google that because side chaining is so powerful and what what i've basically used with this is uh these beats here which are on the every beat uh one two three four i'll just solo that I don't think you can hear it actually. No, you can't hear it because I'm, I'm sending it somewhere else. I'm not sending it to the main mix. I'm sending it to my um, uh, my pads. So my pads are over here on the string bus, and the this EQ sorry not EQ this um, compressor is listening to that side chain. And when I play it now, you'll probably see this moving. Oh, let me go back to the, the solo. Uh, just side chain and so you probably see this moving oh no so it's probably uh, let me see if it's coming through the right one oh, it's probably because this is oh, no so I think it's not selected oh there it is it wasn't selected send that should that should have been moving let's just see if it's working yeah, it's doing something funny here So I'm still getting the hang of uh, Studio One, but this is, I, I believe this has to be selected. I don't know why I have two there. Okay, let's remove that. So this should be sent to the API a, 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 a 250 on the synth. But it didn't say or something my my um side chain 
it's all set up different than in Pro Tools. So uh, let me just check here. So that's working. Just double check that now. So now it's working. So I think I had it on the wrong setting, but so this is on the um, uh, on the pad that's playing. So let me just play the pad for you. Oh, when it comes in, there it is. Now this compressor is working with that kick because I fed the kick to this compressor. So that's why you're getting that sound. If I turn this off, you're just going to hear noise like a pad. But I want it to move with the beat. I want it to sit with the, the groove. And I, I also want it to cut out when the kick hits. I want it to kind of cut out. So the kick is going to sound a little bit punchier. And you can do that a lot cleaner. You, there's a plugin called The Pumper by Waves. It does something very similar, but this has way more um, parameters. You can do the attack and everything. But um, so anyway, we've, we've got that sorted out. So it should be on that synth as well. So let me, let me keep working on that. We should be sending that to both. So it's going to synth, let's go to pads. to that um, to double check that but let's let me keep walking through um, some of my setup here so then uh, then we've got some bass and I'm using in the bass I'm using a um, Nexus and you'll find out how I kind of came up with two different um, arpeggio bass lines which is really kind of cool for anybody can do that and we go into a second one Now we came up with some stabs just to get a little extra uh, synth sound in there. Just need that something a little extra. And 
I used uh, Nexus on that as well. Two different sounds. I just, I just, it just made it sound a little bit fatter. And now we got the main synth line that uh, I have chords going. This is my main. I guess you call it. Rhythm. Cool. And then I've got a pad that comes in. with the, uh, the side chain that we were talking about. So even the pad has rhythm, the same consistent house rhythm where it's one, two, three, four. And then um, the melody, the melody is this, and I just got a few different sounds going, but something kind of simple. one more sound to that and then we go into the next section and I added one more sound which was this same thing and I'll just play them together Very simple. Um, wasn't too busy. It's got a nice, nice little um, delay going, which is which is nice. So kind of fills that out a little bit more. So it's not uh, not as uh, there's something in between those notes. And then towards the very end, I added one more little element just to give it that little extra something special at the end. Uh, and it's like a synth line. So now let's go ahead and let, let's start uh, let's start mixing this. Um, first thing we're going to make sure I'm going to have a look at my I think a lot of the levels are okay with where I like them and the arrangement is here. I've got things that are taken out and um, so now we're just going to actually just I'm really going to dial in that kick. I, I might see what it sounds like with this kick or maybe I'll actually uh, I'll program a, a kick and we'll tune it up and everything and let's see just sounds like what it sounds like here. <laughs> with that kick um we could go in and really try and um get the right notes for that or we could actually let's maybe go a different way in and make this um see if we can make this 808 a little bit more punchy or i might even actually um duplicate this down because we're trying to get a kick sound the problem with this uh this 808 is it's not as punchy as i'd like Love the notes, but it's not as punchy. So let's go on the hunt for another kind of 808 sound, which might be a little easier than trying to tune up that that kick. I might leave this kick in there, but we'll, we'll see. So let's uh, let's go ahead and see what sounds we can find um, uh, without doing too much work. Maybe we can find a, um, this is a crunchy, maybe there's a different setting here. Um, compress, clean. Uh, long distorted, definitely not long. Uh, metal, MPC, mm, uh, maybe. Let's do stab. Let's replace this one here. Wow, doesn't that sound like a kick?
Yep, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. And that was a quick, super quick fix uh, without dialing in this kick and then um, trying to retune it to the right notes and everything. I just I just found I, that sounds great. So I don't know if you guys could hear how bad that sounds with the, with the other kick in it. Can you guys hear that? It really clashes. Um, let's, I'll put this back. When I mute this, you'll hear it without it. And then when I, right now you'll hear it with it. That's just amazing. And, and you can actually, working on this electronic music makes you really dive into that, but you can actually use these same techniques when you're doing like an organic piece of music where it's uh, you know just a normal band. You can really listen for that kick and be like, you know what, I think that kick is actually hitting a wrong note. And you can actually kind of dial it in. And some plugins have, um, uh, I know Easy Drummer has, sometimes you can actually detune or, or raise the pitch a little bit of the kick. You can find the one that feels right. And you're probably getting into the right key, even if you're not on the right exact note, you might be in the, you might be in the key. So you might be hitting a note that's actually in that scale. And it's just like, wow, that sounds way better. And it's, uh, it's really kind of cool that all these little details really, really add the punch and they just clean it all up. It's really nice. So that, that was a great fix. That was really quick. Now the other way to get a little bit more kick is to get everything else out of the way. So let's go ahead and put um, put some uh, uh, EQs on stuff that I ha has no business down in that low end. Starting with, well, actually, I've got a couple of my old um, stems here that have nothing on them. This is just a, a, a template that I was already set up. So we don't need that. We've got piano. We got don't need the squash drums. We don't have BVs. We have LV, which is the just the lead melody. Let's just call it lead melody. Not lead vocals, lead melody. And for anybody who's knowing, who's not sure, I always do capitals for my my groups, uh, and I do um, I don't do capitals for all the tracks. And so this actually just helps me uh, another little quick little visualization. You can see it real quick, and you're like, up. Oh, that's that's a buzz, and um. So we've got drums, bass, piano. I think the only thing going for the piano, I've got piano here, but I don't know if there's anything on. Oh, yeah. So those are stabs. I'm just going to retile that. Now, um, let's get rid of some of that low. We don't need any of that low in there with those stabs. So we got rid of some load. Let's have a look at the strings now. We don't want any um, the strings. Is the pad here and and synth? I think. Let's see, pad. Let's go into the strings. Yep. So let's just take out any lows in there. I'm doing here is I'm just putting a little shelf on it. I've got about 3 dB, uh, around 8. It kind of goes up. I might go up a little higher. Um, but I just want to make it a little bit brighter because overall I'm just sensing the overall mix is, is there's a lot of low stuff and less less high. So I want to, I want to start bringing a little bit of highs into the, into the mix and the pad will be a great one for that. Let's go 
to the beginning. Back to the beginning. There we go. So now these long symbols, they have no business having low end there. So let's just make sure, clean them up and make sure there's no low end in those, in those, uh, in those symbols here, which is these guys. Number one. Yeah, I'm just trying to clean it up here. All right, so let's, with these symbols, let's make sure we've got no, um, let's just put an EQ on them. One of my favorites, I just go to these these H, uh, H EQs. I've been using them for a long time. H EQs by Waves, they're great. You can see what you're doing, you can, um, uh, and it has a lot of parameters and a lot of uh, functions. So let's just get rid of the load. <laughs> Go to an actual symbol. As you can see in those symbols, there's actually not much uh, information or not much uh, sound actually hitting in these low frequencies, but there is something you'll see there is a little line and by cleaning it up, you that does add up. So if you have a little bit of a, a little bit of noise coming through, then you have a little bit of noise on the next track and you got 10 tracks like that, it does add up and it makes your mix not as clean and not as punchy. So it's good to just a good habit to clean things up right from the beginning or right from right from the uh, all of them, you know. So let's have a listen again. You'll see a little bit of frequency down there. Let's go back to the beginning. A little bit of, little bit of frequency. So um, we've got, I believe we've got lows cut out of the stabs, the strings, the lead. Um, I just realized, where's the piano? I thought I had a piano sound in here. Oh no, I changed that. I, I changed the title of that to the to the lead melody. Oh, the stabs, I changed it to the stabs. Um, I was like, oh no, I deleted a bus, but I didn't. All right, so let's. So 
that's the first thing we've done. We've cleaned up the, um, got rid of some out low end. Let's just work on the compressors a little bit more. Um, I don't want to do too much. When you're working with EDM, a lot of the stuff is already processed. A lot of the stuff that you're using samples, it's already processed a lot. So you don't have to go, you don't have to start from the beginning and, and you know, like a, like a lot of the sounds are already in the box and ready to go. And so if it's not broke, don't fix it. And so, um, so let's, so let's, oh, I was having a look over here too. Um, these effects might have some lows on them and they're actually going to the drum bus. So let's make sure um, we don't have any lows in there. Because I don't think we want them in those affected in that B section drums. So let's go to an EQ here. Let's go to the B section. Which is here. So this second one doesn't have an EQ on it. I just want to get rid of that low. So I'm actually going to copy the same filter over to the other channel, but I just won't, um, I won't do this. Uh, I won't do the low, oh, the low pass. Now this is the drum kit. I will. Um, I might like the sound. Let me just have a listen. I don't want that to really interfere with the kick and the bass. Um, so I've cut out like from about 200 down, um, some, somewhere around there. I've, I've cut out, and you. It's not really affecting the sound of that. That 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 effect there it's not not doing too much i don't want too much lows in there it just makes it muddy and you gotta have super clean and clear low end on these tracks cool okay so um all right cool so let's have a look at these compressors now time for a break any questions um okay jack has got going, going here looking at other references there seems to be different house styles for the album you want um it, more with the chill easygoing vibe can we put in risers yep you can put in risers absolutely uh risers are great risers are really fun to kind of put in uh go for it i haven't got many risers in this you could call the some of the reverse symbols risers um but sometimes uh uh, yeah, if if it's if you're hearing it in house music, you can definitely put it in there. Sometimes just be careful with risers that they're not they don't get too big. So um, sometimes they can get really big and then get to more of that techno techno or um, um, uh, electronica or uh, so just be careful with what kind of risers you use. But yeah, absolutely, risers are great. Um, are you using Nexus for most synth sounds instead of Omnisphere? Yes, actually, I am. Um, Nexus, next Omnisphere I find is kind of like an or, organic hybrid between um, Nexus and um, and uh, and and more of a like a a roll like a Roland kind of um, more organic kind of sense and stuff. So I find I find it really dancey. I feel it, I, I really like Nexus. Nexus has got a lot of really really cool stuff. Omnisphere is a little bit more creative. Like they might even use real bows, real real cellos to have create like all create all these sounds but nexus is very much edm very much electronic very much uh there's next to hardly any um organic kind of sound so it's definitely more in the box and which uh, uh, version are you using oh nexus? sorry what what was that oh uh, which uh, version of nexus are you using steve um i think it's the one before the latest um which reminds me i wonder if what is it the stripped? I I was looking online. It looks like they have uh, stripped down versions and then high end versions. And... Um, I I felt like there was only one one version of ne this one's Nexus Three. I think they might have some other products, but 
uh, they might have Nexus 4. I, I can't remember. Uh, maybe someone can check whether it's whether they have four out yet. But yes, they do. They do, yeah. So I only have three, and I probably should double check to see if there's a deal to upgrade because now's the time to upgrade. But, but there was like a sorry, there's there was like a hundred and ninety nine dollar version one. They had up to like an eight hundred dollar version one. And, and oh really? A I... Two thousand version dollar version one. I was just curious which uh, which uh, level you were at. Gee, and and they must have they might have changed because I don't know. Um, I bought this quite a few years ago, and then I just constantly keep buying these expansions, like all these ones here at expansions. You've got, um, you know, uh, Sid. You've got um, Minimal House Two, Minimal House Millennium Pop Two. So I just constantly keep buying these expansions, which have like 131 sounds in it, 132 sounds in it, 130. So I don't know. Um, I guess I've had it, I've had it since 2013. So um, every year they come out with a Christmas one. And I think the last couple of years I forgot to, forgot to get it, but uh, I don't know. So you'll have to double check. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, we, they might have a different pricing system, but um, uh, I'll have to double okay. check. I get the idea. That's it's a, I like it. Yeah, it's a lot of idiot, a lot of a lot of cool um, dance stuff. It's um, good for dance. Yeah. Um, the more packs. Uh, you get more packs with the full price. Yeah, there you go. That, that's a good one that Paul said. You, they, I think they give you a. It might be sixty bucks each, and then if you buy two, it's it's one hundred and ten dollars instead of one hundred and twenty. And then if you buy three, it's another another bit off. So if you buy a bunch at the same time, then you do get a a better deal until you're paying only a couple of you know ten or twenty dollars for expansion. But I think most of the time, I just buy it when I need it. Like I think I bought this future base when um um when I was doing some future base tracks a few years ago. And then, you know, it's like, hey, I need another hip hop sound. I want more hip hop sounds. I'll get the next hip hop five, you know, when I, and I just buy them like randomly throughout the year. Um, and it, you know, just all, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. They're good sounds, definitely good sounds. But um, uh, I guess, so Gary says, I know this is for the album this month. I missed part of the videos and sessions. Are these songs for other publishers as well? Uh, yes, this is for our album. And, um, and if you're on the inside and you know what um, uh, what they need on the uh, something called the society, then um, this definitely will help. You just need vocals on it, of course, but um, that's the other half steps. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, this is for our album or anybody um, anybody wanting to learn how to do EDM house. So let's keep going now. Um, we are going to work on a little bit of the compression side of things. One thing you're going to see there is it's the snare that's triggering it so instead of using my compressor right here to turn down the snare and possibly anything else that later comes in there or claps or anything i'm actually going to go over manually to the snare and turn the snare down just a little bit because then i can turn this compressor down and uh, start touching start hitting all of the the other elements all the other transition uh um, transients that are happening so let's find that kick or the snare, I should say.
um, let's have a look now at a uh, at our um, for anybody who's following here might how my buses are set up. I have all my channels going into their bus groups, and then from the bus groups, I go into a mix bus. So now we're actually going to have a look at the mix bus here and um, uh, have, a, have a little work at it a little bit. Um, and then we'll head into our mastering chain. And before I do that, actually, I might hit the mastering chain and just back off this threshold on the, uh, well, I can't back off too much. Um, <laughs> we're right at, right at the top there, but let's see what it was pushing. Yeah, it's, re it's really, it's pretty hot. It's pretty loud. So it's, it's, it's got a good level. Uh, let's have a look at this mix bus. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the levels are a bit hot, so we'll have to we might have to tweak it a little bit because um, they're a little bit too hot, and I don't have as much control on this end. So um, actually, we could do this. Actually, this would be a quick, easy one for it. So I highlight them all and just turn them all down a dB. So was that two dB? Yeah, it's about it's about. Uh, 2 dB. So I'm gonna, now I've got a little bit more control over here. Another cool um, plugin that I've got, I got this one. Um, this is a really cool company. Um, uh, there's so much, I've dialed in with some, there's so much stuff you can do on this and I have played around a little bit, but the presets are just great. So I, I found myself going back to more presets. It's just like, man, it, it sounds really good. And so um, these are great. There's like, uh, what do I feel like this song needs right now? Does it need more punch? I need more presence? Does it need more, um, uh, more energy drink, you know? Am I trying to do more of a mastering thing or a mixing thing? So um, uh, let's let's go with a bit more of a um, uh, a mixing thing. But what are the lows? Massive stress. I don't want more lows. Um, let's go with um, an expensive mix. I might bring in a bit more sheen. Let's see what it actually did. So cut off some more lows. Cut off. Um, Looks like around um, 100, and it, it actually bumped up around. What's this on that curve? It actually went up about around 50, a tiny, maybe half a dB. But anyway, so this is um, th this this really cool. So it's already set in a bunch of stuff, and let's just hear what it sounds like on and off. <laughs> Too much, but I just want to hear this. That's cool. It, it's we're talking one percent here. It's not a big difference, but it's a tiny bit of a difference, and and I'm liking it, and and. We're going to go with it, and so let's let's start look working on our mastering chain here, um, and see what we got. I got the same kind of. Uh, well, I'll walk you through what I've got. I have my uh, Piag child. I have a setting already set up here. Um, it's uh, you can copy these settings, but it's just it's been working for quite a while. Probably the last six months I've been using it, and um, um, 
I might want to get something different sometime, but um, uh, I've got plenty of other things to do. So <laughs> we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll leave that on for this one. This one's good. I like this work. So I have a compressor there. Um, and then I have my, um, my back CQ, which is only adding, um, uh, only adding, I think it's not even one dB, not even one dB of, um, uh, where is it here? I've, I've had this setting for a while. So I've got, I'm taking off 70. I'm doing a cut on 70, doing cut on 12. And then um, I'm actually giving it another little bit more volume of, um, that looks like about one, one dB. Oh, so there's a shelf. So um, I'm adding about seven, 7.1 7 K, just a tiny one dB shelf. So it's not much. So I'm not really doing much. This is the stereo unit. So they're both linked together. And then I have my AM, Amex that I've been using for a while. It's another setting that I've been, I dialed in one time and then I've, uh, I don't really, I might tweak a little bit if I feel it needs it. But a lot of the time it just, just makes it sound nice. Like if I, if I take this on and off, uh, you'll hear the difference. Now it's a very small difference, it's like another 1%. Uh, some of what you could be hearing is the 1.4 dB of, of gain of added. But then I've also, let me dial in this mono maker. I might push this a little bit lower. It's set on my setting, it's 146 and below, it comes through the mono channel. But I'm actually gonna, let's just play with that and see if we can find something better or find the right for this. <laughs> Shadow heels. Oh, uh, let's go back to our other compressor. I don't really, I didn't dial that in. I was just talking about it, but I didn't do anything. Let's get to a bit more of the meat of the song. Track. I think we're nearly ready to do a bounce down.
I'm doing here is my volumes are really loud and it's I don't like it too. I I I want a bit more control on that limiter and that limiter is kind of maxed out. Everything's kind of like hitting it super hard before it's even I can uh, my threshold's like um, not even it's way up here and I'd like to at least have a bit more control doing it, but um, uh, and it's already hitting minus four minus minus five of dB gain reduction. So. So I'm, I'm just trying to turn my levels down just a little bit on some of these parts. And and uh, yeah, so as I said, a lot of these samples that you're using, they're, they're at maxed. They're at a, already processed a lot. So let's go back to that. So we have a tail that goes on forever. All right, so let's clean that up as we're doing our mastering stage. Um, I actually have this this side chain still continuing out with the uh, with this pad that's still ringing out and as a symbol. But uh, we're going to make sure that that fades before. So let's just have a listen. I might have to go into these tracks and automate it or. Uh, let's... <laughs> actually, yeah, I think that would be nice. So let's. Let's automate that, um, uh, the volume on that one. And that's so close. And now we've got a volume here. Yeah, because you can still hear that. Oh, you know what I might do? I might actually um, fade that as well. So if I fade this side chain, that means the volume of that compressor is not going to be working as hard as we go down. So that's cool. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know if I've done that in a long time. Oh, hang on, I gotta hear that. <laughs> You kind of hear it a little bit. Let's have a listen again. I'm going to play that last note. All right, so it's not triggering that last note. Let's just add another one. <laughs> All 
right, so now I'm just getting lost in the weeds. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's great. Awesome. Okay, let me check that out, Dixie. A uh, little drum beat that comes at 25 and out at 30. It sounds a little odd. Let's see. Let's see what the odd duckling is. Maybe it's the, I don't know, so 20, I'm guessing 25 seconds or 25, measured 25. Let's have a look at 25 seconds. All right, 25. Uh... Um, yeah, so you might be hearing um, some of that delay stuff. Uh, I was actually going to do one little trick, one last little trick before we bounce it down. Um, sometimes I'll do this if I want it to be a super, super, super clean, because um, there's delays and everything going during this stop here. You can hear during that stop there, there's like, you know, it's reverb, there's some delays. Sometimes I might even do this, go to the master track and uh, find the automation of it and turn it right down so this might be too brutal this might be too brutal sometimes this sounds awesome let's see let's see so sometimes you can get that super 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 clean stop maybe we want it um uh maybe like this let's see might be a bit too brutal as i said so let's let's see if we can just do maybe even uh, an eighth. This might be weird. Oh, this is a, what is this? A half, half of the measure. Let's see if this is weird. Maybe we'll fade. That could be cool. That could be cool. Let's have a listen a little bit longer, a little bit further. I might even actually bring up this volume a little bit. So it's not a complete stop. Let's see. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely it hits hits a um, it hits a little bit harder when that comes in. And here's a final little trick, which is a really cool trick. Um, I learned this one from. Chain smokers. They, uh, I watched a video. They were talking about it. And if they, they said if they, you want it to really hit after that chorus, after that bridge or anything, go down a little bit in the, um, in the, uh, like the part before. So I'm going to do this gradual uh, fade. And I guess again, these are these are small little details, but I'm going to do this gradual fade. Uh, right now, that that should be right at zero. Um, and I'm actually going to do, I'm going to pull this down. So we're actually going to be dropping by dB, this whole section. So this whole section is going to be dropping by, what did we end up doing? Oh, that's three, minus three. That may be too much. So let's, let's zoom in a bit more. Maybe we only want to drop down by uh, one dB. So that, well, that's 2.4. So we can go one more. Let's do two. That'll be fine. So that's going to be a slow drop down by two dB, and then it's going to hit hit back in at one. So you're actually going to technically from this gap when we stop, and then when we start up again, you're actually going to go up two dB. So that's quite a little quite a little jump. So it's a cool thing. See the numbers going down over here. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, that's what we want. All right, so let's do a fade at the end and I think we're ready to bounce. <laughs> That's where we want it to go down there. I'll bring my fader out there. Might do this a little bit more. I'm still hearing a bit of a movement. I want a little bit of movement, not too much. Let's see if that's better. Might go down on that synth as well a little bit. Or pad. Yep, I'm happy with that. Um, it actually finishes a little bit before that, so let's just bring this over. All right, the intro, where do we start? I think it's here. That's it. Let's bounce this down. All right. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call this one. Um, uh, um, uh, gosh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> um, what does it sound? Let's have a little listen with the title, thinking of the title. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, great, uh, great titles there, guys. Um, Dancing on Bubbles, House Topper Dance, Sizzle House Dancer, um, <laughs> Last Track. To, yes, that's absolutely the one. So the last track of twenty twenty three, mix one, absolutely. Um, yeah, I like the idea of house in there. Um, it kind of tells them it's like you know it's an EDM, it's house. So, but it's kind of a bit if it's going on a house album, well, it's like they're all going to be house. So I don't know. I'm thinking. Um, I don't know, like, uh, like I don't know if I would put it in the dance category because this one is one eighteen. So when you when you think of dance, um, you, when you think of dance, you're definitely pushing one twenty, one thirty, uh, one twenty five, one thirty. So it's it's def that's what I think typically the, the dance genre is when you say EDM dance. So it's kind of maybe it's more of that house. I'm thinking of cab, uh, a, um, a house cab, like you know, it's like. You got the hint of it's a hat in the house beat and it's like cab, you know, it's like you get a wine in a, at a restaurant, house cab or house red or something. I can't actually want to call it that. House red. There we go. So um just a house Steve's in the house. Oh, oh. Yeah, we do a we'll do a hip hop song. So house red. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's good. So I'm gonna do house, um, house red wine or something, house red, yeah. All right, so let's save. I don't think we saved it. Let's definitely save and let's bounce this one down. 
House red. Um, the house red. There we go. So good. Now I just want to make sure uh, this is only going to be mix one. I got a good feeling. I'm probably going to come back this to, to this one a couple of times. So I'm only going to do an MP3. Uh, I'm not changing the I'm not changing any of the um, uh, resolution or anything. I'm just going to keep it the same. So there we go. Between the loop, we are bouncing down first mix. First mix and last mix, actually, for 2023. Yeah. Awesome, guys. Well, did anyone uh, learn any uh, cool little tips or cool little tricks to try? Cool. Yeah, it's all these adding all these little bells and whistles, and um, you can really, you can really, um, uh, you know, it just adds. You can and all these little tricks that you learn, uh, like your bag of tricks, tricks, and when you're like, oh, you know, it needs something, it needs a spice. Well, it, open up your spice rack. You got whatever you want, you know. So I'm really intrigued by the PSP Master Q2. That looks like a fun thing to use. Yeah, it 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 is, and um uh. I think I got it on sale, so I, I think it's actually quite on the on the top side of things. Um, a bit more expensive. I've got a feeling it's like maybe two or three hundred bucks just for that plugin. Um, I think I got it. Like sign up to that company for for their uh, for their for their sales or whatever. Because I, I think they they had a killer sale on it, and I think I got it for like eighty bucks or something like that, or seventy nine or eighty nine or something. I don't know if I'd have it. Um, and, and that's another good good thing for you guys to realize too. Whenever you're watching a video. Of somebody doing it you don't know the reason why they're using it and so it's like like sometimes you can spend some of your dollars in in in, in different places and, and all that kind of thing and you don't there's so many ways to get to get where you're trying to go and you don't have to you don't have to buy a ferrari to get from here to here you know it's like do we want one <laughs> yeah <laughs> would that be fun absolutely but but it's like you know it's you know, so that's that's something to think about. But that's the reason why I have that plugin, and it's really really cool. Yes, it is absolutely. Would have I bought it just for that plugin? No, I I you know I not not no I wouldn't have hunted that out. And so some of the and saying those kind of things, and I would say some of the the plugins that I absolutely think you should run out and get at any price is you know I love the Nexus stuff. Anything Chris Lord Algae by the by Waves, I love it all. I I've used it all. I it's all good. I I haven't found one Chris Lord Algae plugin that's so whatever price. I think they're always running a sale over there at Waves, but I, or that stuff is like, yep, go out there and get that. Um, I like the DSP. Uh, I think it's neutral and neural uh, guitar stuff. That's the that's, that's a lot of good stuff there. Um, Contact stuff, native instruments, all the stuff there is good. Um, but yeah, and I, and I do love my mastering chain. Soothe two, soothe two. Is that yeah. worth the money? That's two hundred and nine dollars. Um, I don't have it. I I haven't found a need for it. Uh, a lot of the time, some of those plugins are, um, and I haven't investigated it too much. It might add, you know, it might really soothe it, or it might might be really nice. I haven't played with enough to have a have an opinion whether it's worth worth that the actual thing that kind of not scares me but i'm like okay i don't i don't want just a color plug in like you put it on and it, it's a color I, uh, like i want to make sure that i know what i'm doing so that's why i've steered away from other plugins like ozone where it's like one click and you're like whoa you know i don't know what it did you know like what's under the hood i'd rather kind of and that's why my mastering chain has all these separate things because then i just replace those and I'm kind of old school like that. I just want to kind of know what you, what you, each one is doing, and then I just have then I'll have more control because then I can replace that with something else. And so about Soothe, I don't I I don't know. I, I can't give an any Dixie. Life. I've I've tried using Soothe, and it 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 is a I mostly got it to try to soothe harsh vocals, but I found that it's hard to get it to work good. I mean to hear really hear a difference, and when you do hear a difference. I realize it's kind of degrading right. audio a little bit, I've found. So I don't really use it anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I do want to ask you, Steve, uh, I'm still trying to understand. I, I, I love how you you go to uh, groups and then you and then you go to, what is it, the mix? Yep, mix and then the main. What's the difference between the main and the master to you? So um, 
So the reason why, and that's an excellent question because um, everyone has a different setup and I've had this set up for a little while now and it works great for me. But uh, on the on the Pro Tools system I had, I wanted to make sure that my meters, like on my main, when, you know, I could I could put my mastering chain on my main, but the reason I didn't, me personally, was because I wanted just a free and clear um, uh, meter that had no effects on it, nothing was touching it. That's the output. That's the exact end result output that you have. So if I see that, I will see the meter hitting and I'll see how much compression, I'll see how much, what the bounce is and everything. And I know that there's no effects on that channel. That's what everyone else hears. That's that's what the end result is. So that's why I took one step back and added a master channel, even though it's technically wasn't the master, it's it's the master before the main. And so and and then so that's where my kind of thinking was. And there might be many different ways to kind of get that same result. And I actually watch the meter a lot over here on my on my on my uh, Hilo mastering, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, interface kind of thing, uh, my converter over there. So I'm watching the the meters on that as well, just to see how, how the compressor is working. So, so that's kind of like the step there. But coming back a little bit further is, you know, I've got my channels all going to a bus, and then I treat it like all my buses go to a mix bus, and then I send that. You know, I don't do this, but then I in the old school days I would send that mix bus to my mastering engineer. And so then he would get the mix bus and then he would do his mastering. But if I'm mastering it, then I just bring it into the one session. And then you saw in this track here that one of my, um, the snare and the clap was hitting too hard. And I was trying to pull down the compressor a little bit, but I was watching the compressor and it was, it was only hap the, you know, it was only working or it was, uh, the meters were hitting when the snare or the, the thing came in. So that even told me after my ears were fatigued for a little bit, because we'd been going for about an hour, I was like, that told me that there's, it's the snare that's triggering, that would do anything. So if I turn that compressor down, it's only going to turn the snare down. And I want it to turn down, I want it to level or take the dynamics out of the whole track, which had kick, snare, hats, it had a bunch of stuff in it. So that's why I went, and that's the beauty of what we can do when we're in that mastering time. We're actually mastering, we can actually take a back step and go all the way back to the very beginning of the actual track and pull down that snare a little bit. And then, and and the mastering engineers, if you send it to a mastering engineer, they can't do that. They would actually have to dial in that exact frequency and and put some dyma dynamic compress dynamic um you know uh, compressors and stuff on it. But it's actually even even easier just to go back to the original. So that's why I, I, I like that. But um, so yeah, that's why I do the whole I do it all in the whole session. Yeah. Steve, how you doing? Yeah, doing doing good, good. Hey everybody, a um, uh, couple of questions on the drums and, and the bass. The bass, you always got to use an, an eight hundred eight, I would assume, in there for this kind of music. Is that true? Or yeah, an eight hundred eight, or um, mm -hmm. you could have used a nine hundred nine, but it's not it's not too big of a deal. It's more of the um, how you're playing it or, or the sounds that you go for. And um, if you have listened to a lot of uh, Swedish house mafia, or even just going to um uh some of the the bass the bass that you would hear on, on those tracks it's a little bit more um i feel it's a little bit more a little bit more busier and so there's like stuff happening and and um but making sure but it doesn't have to necessarily be an 808 i would definitely keep it electronic don't go with a um uh for, for house you don't go don't go with a um an organic bass line or something. You know, I got a bass here in the back. I'm not going to play that on this this genre because it really needs that kind of electronic sound. Um, that that's all it would need though. But I mean, it wouldn't need a, another bass layered on it. Just an 808 is fine on its yep. own. Yep. Uh. Well, no, no. Well, um, I have three different bases on this one. Uh, yeah. Or, or kicks and basses. I should, should say the bass line is like, dum, du, du, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, you know, it's moving. But then I have an eight, eight oh eight, uh, on on that that kick. So it's like kick on the, the house beat. That the the kick comes in on every beat. So I have the dun 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 dun, dun or whatever the whatever the uh, uh, the 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 melody or the the chord progression is going. So I've got that, and then I actually have a shorter. 808 that actually worked out really well at the beginning of this i was like wow that was easy you know because i i wanted something that sounded like a kick because i didn't have a kick and attack in there so it's i've actually got two two 808s and then the baseline as well as a baseline but 
the thinking was if, if you have one that does two that does two different things then you only need that one or you know but the, i couldn't get that without doing it so you don't have to let it so think more of what what does it need i felt like it needed a kick it needed an attack i needed something to punch and the 808 that i picked for the the kick drum it wasn't punching the way i wanted to and and as I'm saying this now, I'm thinking, I wonder what it would sound like if I actually muted that first one and only had that second one. So I don't know. I, I might even try that on my next mix and just see if that, maybe that clean. So you used, you used one for, for basically for the rhythm, but you were using the other one also for a percussive to go with, you know, give it more of a punch on the uh, 808s. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah pr pretty much. Let's actually dive in for a second. So uh, let me open up my screen here. So... So yeah, I've got my, um, up here we've got the drum kit. Um, actually, I'll just solo this one. We've got the drum kit. It's got no kick in it because I muted, the, I muted the kick. So it has a kick here, an 808 kick. I muted it because it's the wrong, it's not changing pitch and it need, I need it to change pitch because it sounds weird. If I, I'll, I could mute this again. I did it in the, in the video, but um, or earlier in the session, but if I unmuted that, it, it's the wrong note. There's something happened. So I'd have to pull that out and tune that because it's really clashing, or I just muted it and went with um, uh, an 808 I already had that I did in the session the other day. And that's that's kind of a kick. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of a kick thing um th that was going to be my kick but it just didn't attack enough and so i wanted another attack and then if i put these together with the kick in it you'll hear it it just uh, it's 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 out of tune it's wrong so it's it's not it's just it's clashing so i'd go i'd have to i'd have to pull that out and but you know saying that could be a good 15 minutes of trying to dial that in or, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So it's actually super easy and super quick to do it the other way. Um, many different ways to get there. And then I found this one, uh, this sound here, and this was just a preset. It was called Stab 808 on um, one of my go-to uh, um, 808, 808 Warfare. I think it's even a free thing. I've just been using it for a while. It just works well. But I have all these different presets, um, and Stab was the first one I came to it. And I loved it. And so I was like, this works. This is exactly what I wanted. It, this kind of kick. This is what I was hearing. This is what it sounded like. So, and then, then I have a bass. So let's add bass here. And how I came up with that bass is really cool. If you watch the first video, it's so simple. It's you just find a, an arpeggiator that works. You have all these bass lines here in uh, Nexus, and so I just that's how I came up with that bass line. So it's just um, uh, here it is. Here it's just like I could have moved around. I'm not even doing it. I'm just playing the regular bass notes. Uh and um and that's what it, that that's that's the arpeggiator came up. So it was really cool. It was really an easy bass line to find. You said that's free, that warfare. Oh, I I somebody told me they I can't uh somebody told me it was it was one of the free ones and they said, Why are you using it? That's one of the free ones. And I was like, yeah. oh, I just, I didn't even know because I think it came in a pack that I got. Um, I bought a producer's pack on Black Friday one year and it came with any all this stuff. I didn't even have a clue what it was. And that 808, I went searching for an 808 once and then I was like, that came up and I was like, this works. And it was, I haven't I haven't gone much different, you know. Uh, sometimes I'll use the Nexus 808, um, but they're very similar. And yeah, you don't have to spend, you don't have to spend much to find a 
Fine. Looks like it's for forty seven dollars, which isn't bad. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. What company you... is it? Is it Producers House or something? Producers London? Um yeah, Producers Choice. Producers Choice. There you go. So I think at one year they had like ridiculous 80% off or something. It was like get everything in our whole website for hundred dollars or something in the next two hours or something, or next weekend or whatever. And it's like, yep, you got a lot of stuff that sounds like a deal, I'll do it. So but the, the but what we was trying to get at, I I um I need some work on the 808s, but generally that's your focus. You got to get the drums and the bass to to work in this this type of music. Yes, for EDM, the 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 bass and the kick are, are yeah the it's kick absolutely. So you definitely the and the first step on that on that or the first thing I would get I would say to anybody to address is your tuning. So, um. In the organic world, sometimes you can have the drum kit and and the kick might be let's just say a a, a a D sharp or something, and then the key of the song is actually in C, you know, and and that D sharp shouldn't be anywhere on stage, you know, really, because you know if you're in the key of C, it's it's, it's just going to be a clash, it's just going to clash, or let's even say a D flat or something. So it's just gonna it's just going to have this tension. It's just going to feel this tension when the whole band is in the key of C. We're all jamming along and and so that's what the kick drum is doing. And you can get away with that a lot in, you know, organic music. You know, it's not, not a deal to break. Neil, it's not a deal breaker. But if you knew that and you walked over to the drummer and you said, hey, why don't you just uh, tune your tune your drum down to C, like just your kick drum, just tune it down to C. Uh, and he and if he does that, he's not going to do anything. Like, like basically, he's just going to play the same beat. Everything's going to sound just so much better, like it's yeah i remember a story i remember i was hiring different drummers and and not that many and this is years ago not many drummers would do that but there was this one drummer came in and he he would tune it and everything it just it always sounded good and he never was doing much he was just he would just play on the beat he wasn't this busy drummer but he was just playing on the beat but he tuned his drums up every single time and other guys might have been able to play all this sorts of stuff and and but they didn't tune the drums up and it was like I, yeah so anyway with edm music you've definitely got to dial that in and so if you'll have a look at the first video i i do take the time to make sure that those kicks so if the bass line is dun 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 the kick will be like da 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 so it, it's just amazing all of a sudden it's going to sound 20 30 percent better and that's all you did you know so you're tuning up that kick um because there's a lot of low frequency down there and there's a lot of waves that move around and so they need to be in line so it's um yeah i so, like i like the music i just i've just you know work working my way around the the, the drum the kick and the bass and, and trying to get that like this like your track is perfect it just sounded like you had everything you know working at that level and that's that's yeah. kind of where i want to get to so absolutely it's, it's, yeah no, I, I got to finish the video, but I caught, caught a little of it. It looks looks like that'll be good. Yeah, it's it's it is really cool doing the um, and as I said, that's the first thing I'd say. Make sure your your kick is in tune. That's a big day. That's a big game changer. And the second thing is just make sure you're using the right the snares that fit the genre, you know, and, and the hats that fit this genre. Uh, you know, if you're doing trap, then there's a lot of those hats that are like like sprinklers, you know, and 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 just getting a few of those elements. All of a sudden, it just fits into that genre. But it's all under the big umbrella of EDM, and so, um, but you know, so we're kind of we're we're dissecting a little part of EDM. But EDM definitely keep it all in the box, throw away all the organic stuff, like don't throw it away, <laughs> put it aside, and uh, you know, come back and make sure it's in the box because if you use a, a, a an organic snare, all of a sudden it's like this hybrid thing. It's not it's not going to fit the category, and it's not going to quite fit rock or whatever that snare it's just so having that snare is a big deal but the first thing is tune your stuff tune it up from the big from the floor up like having the the kick in tune and and like go back to the times where i've a bead where i've add added the kick and it's the wrong it's the, it's the kit that came with whatever it was and that kick drum is just in the wrong note whatever it is it's just clashing you can hear it's like it just mushes there everything's weird and then you mute it and it's like hey now it's punchy and that's what you want so. And, and this is for young and the restless you say i uh, yeah so uh so for um for for you guys that are on the inside you might know about the society club which is you know so it's very kind of heading that kind of way they need stuff like this but of course they use vocal stuff but this is for our albums we need a house yeah 
um, house album, but yes, that's that's where we're that's where we're heading. So it's that kind of same sort of genre. And they they like minor keys too as well on the for the show. Yep. Uh, the, yep. This one um, on the, when I yep. This is in a minor key, the minor minor chord progression. Um, check out the first video. That's where I kind of yeah. come up with the uh, um, the uh, minor key minor key um, chord progression. EDM. There's a lot of uh, any stuff that has dance. You're probably going to find ninety percent of it is minor in the minor keys. Like there's a lot of a lot of EDM stuff is in minor keys. Not not all, but there's a lot. So that's a that's a big that's a big key. <laughs> that's a big key pun intended to a minor key in a doo -doo, Thanks. button. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for a great year. Really enjoyed it. Oh no worries. Yeah, great job, guys. Any last question before I um before I log off? For 2023, yeah, go ahead, Chuck. I just have a quick question about that. There was one plugin you you were adjusting the stereo width a little bit, and then next to it was a knob called Mono Maker. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. Is that where you was it the Mono Maker? If I understand this, was it just finding certain frequencies to center? Yes, exactly. You got it. That's exactly what it is. So that's another way to find you can get like three, four, five percent more punch out of your your mixes that that the mono maker is basically whatever frequency you set and i think on this one i dialed it down from 140 something to to 120 or something um, so all of the frequencies then the whole song anything that's below 120 gets put into the middle so it just gets put in the middle so then you're allowing a little bit more space on the sides but that the sub is you know the sub is usually in the in the, in the, in the middle that's where the that's where the power is and so um, you just find it gets even cleaned up a little bit more. And so the mono make is really cool. Anything on the, on, I think it's plugin Alliance. Um, uh, anything that that Brainworks or plugin Alliance company has a lot of them, a lot of the plugins have the mono maker. And um, that's the, uh, that's the one I use on the MS on the a AMEC um, MS uh, plugin that I use there. That's the only one I use it. Cause I, I think I have it hidden on some of the others, some of the other ones that, but they, I think a lot of them have that MS, they have that mono maker um, function, which I think is, I think it's their trademark, you know, the, uh, the plugin alliance or uh, they used to be called Brainworks for some reason. I, I, I didn't follow what, what the chain was, but, but yeah, so that company, it's their kind of patent technology. It's really cool. It's a nice one. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm gonna let you all go, and um, and uh, I'm gonna go get some uh, pizza and pumpkin pie. That's that's my. <laughs> of course it is pumpkin pie. Of course it is. So um, uh, the Steve, last happy new year from the future. <laughs> yeah. How is it? How there. is the new year? <laughs> yeah, it's good so far. <laughs> Pretty tired, but but all good. So enjoy tonight, guys. <laughs> happy new year, guys. Happy yeah. new happy year. Thank All right, you, so you guys have a safe, uh, safe night. Happy we'll New see Year. You next year. All right, see ya.